All right, guys, welcome to uh, chapel. So glad that you're here today. Uh, we got a great chapel set up for you. So many elements. We got some of God's word that's coming. We've got some music, some worship. Man, it's just a good day to be here. Can I get an amen? Anyone? Amen. No, it's, all right. It's cool. It's cool. I got you. I got you. That's right. Amen, Mr. Ratchford. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Myself. I like that. That was good. Uh, we're just, whoo, this is going. Mm. Everybody uh, stand up. We got some worship that's going to happen. You ready? Yes, sir. You are so good it's me uh, yeah it's just cool this, this isn't working cool cool i made it all right your turn all right that's uh that's cool i got it oh cool cool oh, that's right oh sweet play sweet play all right, you got it. You go ahead. No? Okay. Oh, that's cool. I got it for you. No worries. That's my hands. Here you go. Hey, great job. Great job. Blowing it for a little luck. Come back around. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. I got it. I got it. Okay. Uh, welcome, guys, to class today. Um, what is the equation of life? That's what we're starting with. So do we have any questions? Any questions out there? No? Uh, that's... It's cool. I'll, I got it again. All right. Are we supposed to turn our test tomorrow or not? Uh, test. Uh, no, just a quiz. We're good. But back to what is the question, the equation of life, the answer to it? Anyone? Anyone? Nutrition. Man, I am starving. Ready for this. Um, I got this, uh, this Nutri-Grain bar here. Uh, you want it? I don't, I don't want it. It's fine. You can... You don't want it either? Okay. My mom sent it, so I guess I'll eat it. <sighs> All right, village. Uh, just having a little fun with the craziness of life and how we want to be together, but we're not right now. Um, and in this season, you're learning how to do online classes, but at the same time, we're learning how to do chapel virtually. So we're having to rethink this because we can't gather, we can't have fun. We are uh, in the same way of connecting and being here, but we're still gonna do chapel. We're gonna still be bringing you some good stuff. So I hope you enjoy this chapel space that we put together and love you guys. I uh, hope you're healthy, that you're safe, and that you're enjoying time with uh, your family um, and that you're finding ways to live life well, but let's continue to worship our God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So join me as we worship. So this is Ms. B, and I have the honor and the privilege of opening us up in prayer um, and just inviting God to just be in this space and have his way. So if you could close your eyes and bow your head and let's go into prayer. Dear Lord, Thank you so much, God, for just who you are. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord God. Thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. There's so much going on in our world, in our communities, and in our homes, God, but you are still faithful and you are still there, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you would just continue to keep your hand on every single person that's under the sound of my voice, Lord. Let the world experience your power. Let the world see your goodness, Lord God. I pray if there's anyone that is feeling anxious or is overwhelmed with their school work or has a lot any parents that just feels overwhelmed with having their kids home and trying to make sure that they learn I pray that you would just give them peace right now in Jesus name Lord God I pray Lord that you would have your way Lord although we don't understand what's going on and we don't know everything we know that you are in control Lord God so thank you Lord thank you for allowing us to be a village and to be together and to stand together in community and to just go with whatever it is that you are doing and to trust you Lord 
I pray, Lord, that as we continue on with this chapel, you would give us wisdom to touch the hearts of those who may not know you or who may be who may not have a church where they're not able to really experience something like this and being in community like this, Lord God. So we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for all of those right now that are grieving in that feel alone, God. I pray that you would just comfort them right now. Let them feel your Holy Spirit. Just touch their hearts and let them, and reminding them that you're there, Lord. And so we thank you, God, for creating a space like this for us to still be able to worship you as a community, even though it's online, Lord. And I know that you have some great things in store for each and every one of us, Lord God. Allow us to experience your peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, and rest, Lord. Let us have rest in knowing that you have the whole world in your hands, Lord. And we thank you and we love you and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen, village.
Hi Village Christian students, here I am in front of my favorite view of the campus. Oftentimes during nutrition or lunch, I'll just look out and take in the scene and I know up by A-Hall the seniors are hanging out with the theater kids. Inside there's junior girls, there's the international students in Mrs. B's room. Further on down the shield there we've got the ninth graders tick-tocking away. Beyond them, the sophomores are hanging out, the basketball boys, volleyball girls, soccer kids. Other side, we've got seniors, uh, girls hanging out. Down the corridor, we've got the middle schoolers. And then beyond that, in the triangle, more middle school students hanging out. And it just makes me think how much I miss you guys. But I want to tell you how impressed I am with you, how proud I am of you. You have taken to online learning in such a short amount of time and you're doing amazingly well. As impressed as I am with you, I'm even more blown away by your teachers. They literally had to learn a whole new way of teaching in a weekend. And I know they're working super hard to keep their lessons and their assignments engaging for you and to help you continue learning. And that's our goal. See, we wanna make sure we're not wasting time. We are getting you towards your educational goals. We want you to be able to pass that AP exam. We want you to be able to learn that language. We want you to be able to get a great grade this semester and be ready for next school year. And beyond that, our prayer for you is this. Our prayer for you is that you will become the leaders of tomorrow. And because you have gone so well through this journey, this difficult time, with your faith intact, learning and growing, that you're going to be ready for the next pandemic or global crisis that will come down the road when you're the adults of our society. Because frankly, I'm not sure my generation was ready for this, but I believe that your generation will. And more than that, our prayer for you is this, that during this time, we know that the virus affects those who are elderly in this community. And we want to make sure that your generation is doing everything you can to stop the spread of the virus. See, it's your grandparents, your neighbors, the elderly in our community that needs you to slow this down. So in case they do get sick, there's enough hospital beds and ventilators for them to help them through this. And more than that, we also know that this is an opportunity for you to step out and be the light of Christ in a very dark time. You've seen, as I have, these incredible random acts of kindness on social media where people are doing things like taking the grocery list for an elderly neighbor and going shopping and buying them things. You can take in the trash cans or take the trash cans out for your elderly neighbor. You can write to someone in a nursing home or in a retirement home somewhere who can't get out. This is a chance for you guys to really step out and to make a difference. We've created a Facebook page where people in our community can share their needs and then the rest of us can see what we can do to help out and make a difference in their lives. So those of you who've gone through the ninth grade retreat know that we have a favorite verse that we share with you. It's Ephesians 2.10 and it goes like this. For we are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Works that God has prepared in advance for us to do. So this is your moment, Crusaders. We pray that you will step into it, that you will go out there and do those good works. And as soon as we can have you back on campus, right out here in the shield, having a great time at nutrition and lunch, we will, because we can't wait for you to come back. Until then, stay healthy. Go Crusaders.
grace On the ground where the grave did All my shame remains Now for dead in your wake You crashed those age-old gates You left no stone unturned You stepped out of that grave Shot in me all the way Here I stand, high in surrender I need you now Hold my heart, now and forever My soul cries out Once I was broken But you love my whole heart through Sin has no hold on me Cause your grace holds me now Healed and forgiven My chains are now Death has no hold on me It's your grace holds the ground Your grace holds me now 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 This is a crazy time and a crazy reality that we're living in. And it's, it's a time that's unprecedented and there's so much that is unknown and it comes with a fear of what's, what's happening and what is coming next. And we really don't know when it's gonna stop. And as I've been thinking about it, I've considered, well, this is a lot like an analogy of running. And I've done a lot of long distance running now through Team World Vision, so I've ran half marathons and marathons. And there's this place in running where they call it the wall. And anyone who's run long distance, they know it. You get to this point while you're putting in those miles, trying to get to the finish line where it feels like a wall. Physically, you are exhausted. And mentally, everything up here is saying you're stupid. You cannot do this, you're done. You just need to check out, you need to stop. Walk over to the side of the street right here, sit down, you can't do it, you're done. That's the point in a marathon where you have to push through. You have to take that wall and you have to break it down, you have to break through that wall in order to keep going and to make that finish line to get to what's next. And I'm just drawn into that's where we're at right now. And in different ways, I don't know what the wall is for you and whether it's intense right now or maybe you're still waiting for that wall because you're in that unknown. But I have that feeling we're all there, butting up against it. What's next and how am I gonna get through? Guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. The wall hit heavy for me this Wednesday. I mean, I was already feeling it. All the tension, all the difficulty, the unknown, which we're all dealing with. And then I got a phone call on Wednesday that Mr. Kwa had passed away. And not even related to the coronavirus, just from a bacteria, and it happened so quickly. I was floored. I mean, I tried to keep working at my table and on my computer, and I just had to push my computer away and back away and I was done. I had to take a break. I hit that wall and I just didn't know what could be next. I didn't know how to move past this. How could this be happening all at one time in our midst? It floored me. Physically, I felt ill and mentally, I just thought this is it. I don't know what to do after this point, this wall. See, the question that I had, and I know we all have this at some point, but it just seems to be bubbling right to the surface. Why is there evil? Why do bad things happen around us? Why is there war? Why is there disease? Why do people go without basic needs? If we were created to be in this world and God is a good God, why do these bad things happen? Why does untimely death 
happen in our midst? It is a question that is extremely difficult and bothersome. Biblical scholars have calmed the scriptures and we know that we're in a world that is broken and bad things happen. So it's a question we have to ask over and over again. Where most biblical scholars land, and I believe that this holds the essence of where the problem exists and then where God's nature exists. And we have to go all the way back to creation. In creation, it says that God creates over this six day period and each day after he creates, he said, this is good. When he gets to the sixth day, he creates humanity in his own image, he even says it's very good. And then on the seventh day, he rests. Then after that in the story, we find that the first humans had a choice. And that was part of God's created nature, I believe, that he created nature not just to stand still, but to have movement in it. And he gave choice and the beauty of free will inside of this creation and chiefly in us as we were able to make major and amazing choices in our life, but that's both for good and for evil. And so these early humans made the choice poorly at some point. They went against God and they caused what we call the fall. And it's simple in the word, but it's so complex in the magnitude of what happened. God created and it was good and it was good and it was good and it was very good and that was God's intention. And then he gave this choice, but it wasn't his expectation for us to choose evil and problem, but we did. And from this point, we fell. And now we live in this existence of a world where things are up and down. There is good, there is evil, and that is part of our existence but it's not the intended nature of God and what God wants for our creation, for us. See, the truth is that we do live in a fallen world. We live in a place that has brokenness, that has disease, that has untimely death, that has all these unknowns surrounding us. But when we look into God's Word, we see that that was not His intention. God's intention was for goodness, and we fell and we're down here. But God is trying to reconcile us back to this place of goodness, even in the midst of our pain and our darkness. And the ultimate example of that was that God sent His one and only Son to this earth to show us that He loves us and that there was a different created nature. He sent His Son to make the ultimate sacrifice of love and in the death and the sacrifice of Jesus, there was three days later and He conquered death and let us know that there is hope that is beyond death, that there is life that is beyond death, that we have an assurance of a pardon, that we have an assurance of new life and the darkness cannot hold us down from that. We have this promise that all of those who love Christ, that God is working towards the good. He is trying to work to redeem towards His intended and called forth purpose. And that is the hope and the perspective that I want all of us to have, a godly perspective on the beauty of His creation. And that ultimately, even if we face hard times, that there is new life coming that there is hope. And I don't want to belittle the place that we're in and the struggle that we have because it's real, but I want us to be reminded of the ultimate hope that is in Jesus Christ and His nature. God is about the created goodness and He is trying to pull us back to that constantly. And He wants to meet each of us where we're at in our fears and our struggles and say, I love you, I got you. May we have a godly perspective even in the struggles.